Hello, wrestling fans, and welcome back to 10 Count. I'm Steve Fall, but on today's edition, I'm going to get a little too sweet, I believe. Come talking to me, Yim. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Now, I called you Mia Yim, but yet on your Twitter and the wrestling world went upside down last night during Monday Night Raw because it seems that your name possibly has changed. Is this true? Yes. Now, what are we going by now? Mi Chen. Mi Chen. Now, why the name change? Uh, Well, it's a nickname within the OC. All the boys have their nicknames and they're like, you need a nickname too. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll do a nickname that I've had since I was a kid. So something that my mom has been calling me since <laughs> I was a kid. So we'll go with that. <laughs> and I believe if I was correct, it's crazy in Korean. Yes. So yes. your mom's been calling you crazy forever? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good old mom's making us feel good about ourselves. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's so funny but yeah the, the the wrestling world was going crazy last night of why why this name change could it be this reason could it be that reason but clearly it's a nickname your mom gave you so here we are now in today's world new name but let's talk about what's happening coming up survivor series war games this weekend boston garden oh yeah and you're on Team Bianca Belair. Now, how excited are for you? Because this is the first time War Games has been on, like a Raw or a SmackDown type mm-hmm. event. It's been an NXT, but now here we are, Raw SmackDown. How pumped are you? Oh, I'm so excited because I missed out on the first War Games. So now I get to come back and do what I do best. I love it because, you know, in NXT, it seems like the parking lot and backstage area is unsafe. The security is terrible there. Everyone gets attacked in the parking lot. Backstage, you were part of that situation as well. So, unfortunately, maybe this time around, no one – stay away from the parking lot, honestly. Oh, I like, have no plans on being in the parking lot. You know, just stay away Well, because it'll be freezing as well because I can tell you're cold. Yeah. You got a hat on. You got a coat on. You're inside. But still – it's very chilly, and I'm, I'm imagining you are in the New England area right now getting prepped for mm-hmm. Survivor Series, so <sighs> chilly willy indeed. Mm-hmm. But what brought you back to the WWE? Because I know we all missed you, but why now? Triple H. I have a lot of respect for him, and when I found out that he took over, he was bringing all my friends back, and it it just – it was the right time, right place. And it working under him with NXT has been so fun, super, like, it's so easy to talk to him that it was an easy decision for me to come back with, with him in charge, for sure. Now, do you think it's because of his wrestling background? Because he obviously knows the, how a wrestler feels when they're not being presented the way they want to be. But yet mm-hmm. he also has, you know, the business hat on, but he also has the wrestler's hat. So do you feel like he's easier to talk to for that reason? So, um, I, I don't know what goes through his mind, but I, I do think so. But ever since like day one, since meeting him, he just has that vibe that you can approach him, you know, about anything. If something's going on that you need time off, or if, if you have a creative idea, it's just so easy to just approach him. I I don't know. It's his energy. It's his vibes. Okay. And now being back in the WWE, the day of. Were you in hiding? We've seen videos, documentaries where people are like in masks and hoods inside trailers, inside buses being sh- shipped in and, or whatever. Like, what was your day like? Were you in hiding all day? Uh, it was a hectic day, but yes, I, I was trying to avoid everybody. And um, the the only person that knew was my big brother, Shelton. And, <laughs> you, you know, it, it's I tell him everything. And I, yeah. I was hiding, but he knew. So were you in the building? Did they bring you in? Like, were you inside of like one of the closed off rooms and the door was like closed and no one could go in and, you know, uh, you know, maybe like wild bear inside don't enter. And and there you are (laughs) inside. Like, what was that situation like? Because obviously you have to enter the building. Where are you going in? Like, how are you getting in? Uh, That's secret. Secret. (laughs) Just like the fifth member of Bianca Belair's War Games team. Now, it's just me and you talking. Okay, just me and you talking. Can you tell me who's on the team? Dude, I don't even know who's on. I don't even know. You don't even know. We're going to find out according to what Bianca said on Raw. We're going to find out on SmackDown this Friday night on Fox. 
who the fifth member is. But will we actually find out on Friday? Is the tease going to lead me into Saturday where I'm biting all my nails off, trying to figure out who is actually on the team? Who would you like to be on the team, though, if you could pick somebody? What are the restrictions? No restrictions. Shana. <laughs> yes. Definitely yeah. Shana. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, there's been a resurgence of her recently, too. And uh, I, I've really enjoyed seeing her choke out everyone backstage. Me, too. So, <laughs> as it, long as it's not me. Well, yes, of course. <laughs> well, you know, present company uh, excluded from being choked out. You know, Shotzi and Ronda is coming up this weekend as well mm -hmm. at Survivor Series. You know, this is a big matchup for Shotzi, but also uh, maybe a test for Ronda because Ronda's been fighting people like a Charlotte Flair or a Becky Lynch and people like and Liv Morgan. And... Shotzi, this is kind of like her big first big uh, championship match on a large pay-per-view. Like, who do you think is going to win? And how do you think Shotzi's feeling going into this? Man, so Shotzi, Shotzi's Michin too. She's crazy, too. So I feel like this is going to be a whole different ballgame for Rana because Shotzi, like, I could see her wanting to get her limbs broken and, like, <laughs> Beating, beating Ronda with her own limbs type thing, you know, because Shotzi is just that crazy. Um, but I know that she's nervous. Like this is this is big for a lot of people um, for Survivor Series. So I know she's nervous, but knowing her and knowing what she can do, she's going to be just fine. Oh, man, I'm so excited for that one. So since you're officially you're officially a member of the OC, correct? Yes. OK. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, someone hangs out with someone, but they're not in the group. So you're, you're like, oh, I'm sorry, is that person in there? So you uh, you officially can walk the streets and too sweet anyone you want as long as you're doing it underneath the guise of the OC. I, I yeah. I mean, they they got me a vest. That, that's got to mean I'm, I'm a part of the group. I hope. <laughs> I hope. Ne next will be like a sidecar. You're next to, you know, AJ driving down the street on the Harleys. I, I like it. Actually, who's kidding about a sidecar? Give yourself a Harley. You know, you just des you deserve in the OC. That's incredible because if you think about the history of the OC, really, I think you might be the first ever, you know, uh, female member. If you go back in the history of the real, you know, the true history of this OC group back to Finn Balor days uh, as the prince, mm -hmm. I think you might be the first one. Is this this is groundbreaking? It could. I'm I'm gonna have to do research. I. I feel like there were other members or there's like a, there was another female, but I got to double check. Yeah. But I don't know. No, oh, that would, that would be really cool. That, I know you, you history books are being made. You're, you're every time you show up, it seems this past few weeks that you came back to the WWE. It's like history's being made. Uh, here's a question though, is you just showed up, you get plopped into war games. Now this is an interesting question. Do you think there's some, maybe some jealousy amongst people who are not in the war games who've been around this whole time, busting their ass, trying to continue on growing. Um, here you are now plopped in and then you get war games. Is, you, have you felt the pressure from some people backstage being like, why not me? I haven't felt that pressure um, since coming back because it's a lot of the same NXT group. Like we've all really support each other and just want each other to, you know, be on top. And whether, you know, Bianca as champion, it's awesome seeing her from when I first came to NXT to what she's doing now that I'm just happy to be there and to cheer her on. Mm. Um, so it's a lot of that same attitude. And, I'm, you know, it's wrestling. So I'm sure there's there is some of that there. But I think because the support and um, like the sisterhood of the, the rest of the girls, it kind of overshadows that. Right. Right. True. True. Uh, so who are you most excited to uh, after war games? Obviously, after, let's get past war games for a minute. Who are you most excited to just get in the ring and just tear them apart? I'm guessing Rhea Ripley right now. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely Rhea. <laughs> that boot to the face on Monday Night Raw. How is your face doing? Because it, it seems like it's just like she just smushed you. Yeah. Um, well, I'm glad that the boot mark isn't on my face anymore. <laughs> I had to put a lot of makeup on, but, uh, yeah, it was, it, it did not taste delicious to say the least. And no. I'm just, I'm just glad it's not showing up on the camera right now. 
Yeah, I uh, imagine that feeling someone's boot to their face is not the you know greatest feeling, and then going to sleep and waking up and going, oh, why can't I brush my teeth properly? Mm-hmm. Most likely because it's a boot to your face. Yeah. So with you with you returning though, it seems like everyone's coming home. You know, you with Emma Bray Wyatt recently. You know, Hit Row, Karen Cross, Scarlet. It's an endless list of people we all missed. Who do you want to see come back home? Tegan Knox. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, one hundred percent. And uh, she definitely was part of the uh, the big war games in NXT, where we're like, "Yay!" And then she got attacked. Um, yep. Not the best day for Tegan Knox, and uh, and I, I'd love to see her back too because it seemed like her and Shotzi had something good going on in the uh, the women's tag team division. And then, you know, as things go, business things change, and you know, she's gone now. But just like how you were gone. If we can get Tegan Knox back in the WWE as well, I would love to see her return. Because right now, there's just so many women. It felt like there were a good crop. But now, Scarlett and you and Emma and uh, B-Fab, everyone coming back. Do you think with the influx of women's wrestlers, we could see another Evolution pay-per-view? I hope so. I hope so. It was, um, I was there for the first one, but I, you know, I wasn't on any matches or anything. But watching, it's like, I need to be on the next one. Yeah. So I hope there's another one and I I hope I get to be a part of it. I think there's a hunger for women's wrestling in general, but having an entire pay-per-view based around the achievements of main eventing WrestleManias, getting their own Royal Rumble, the really like the accomplishments are just all over the place, it seems. And having another evolution pay-per-view, I think is just like, it's money, in my opinion, it's money. And, and then if you could be on this pay-per-view, who would you want to wrestle? And let, let's just, we'll, we're, since Trish and Lita and all these people keep coming back, let's throw in the fantasy booking here. Let's have some fun. Who would you oh, want to face? Man. Past, present, future. Who would you go one-on-one with if you had the choice at Evolution 2? <laughs> I would want, and if... <laughs> If there are no rules, no whatsoever, rules. I would want Rhonda and Shayna versus me and Gail Kim. Oh. <laughs> oh my! Oh my! I love me some Gail Kim. Another mm-hmm. uh, a person I would love to see return home someday. Uh, we'll have to see. I don't know. She's a bit busy, but I I think that would be a match that people would drool and be like, "This is this is you know the the <laughs> chance of this is wrestling. This is awesome. Holy bleep! Holy bleep! I think that match would definitely bring that level of excitement. Oh my god! You got me. I got I got the goosebumps now. I got the goosebumps. You got me all pumped up. Uh, Survivor Series is coming up. Undertaker shows coming up. SmackDown in Rhode Island. There's just so much happening this weekend. I, I am so excited. But again, war games. Like this is a different level of excitement because, again, we have never seen war games on a Survivor Series pay per view. And I know talking to other uh, people in the wrestling world, they were like, are we going to get another Raw versus SmackDown Survivor Series? And people were like, yeah, that's fun too. But then you heard Triple H announce war games. Like this, this has got to be exciting for fans, including you. Like, how, what do you want the fans to experience watching you and the women tear it up in the war games match? Them to react like you, to have the goosebumps, to do the chance, to just be so into the match that they're just like, it's like they don't see anything else but just the carnage and the war that's happening and just be impressed with everybody. I, that's that's what I want. I, I, I cannot wait. I will be there live in the audience cheering oh, you on, supporting your team, not damage control. And Nikki throwing away the 24-7 championship. That's not cool. Dana Brooke was pissed. And I'd be pissed too if I was Dana Brooke. Uh, yep. one, one final question though, because I asked Dana Brooke this question a few weeks ago. Maybe you have a different answer. She wanted to transition the 24-7 championship into a secondary women's championship, like an intercontinental mm-hmm. title for women. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you think that would be in the cards? Because we already have the Raw and SmackDown women's championships. You have the women's tag team titles. But an intercontinental title for the women, it gives more opportunities, more championship matches, more storylines. What do you think? I agree with that, especially with all the women that are coming back. 
I totally agree with that. I think that would be smart. Oh, man. I, I cannot wait. The time is up. War Games is this weekend on Peacock. Remember, The Undertaker Show is Friday, including SmackDown in Rhode Island. So you got double dose of wrestling on Friday night. If you want to go to one show, try to fly to the other or <laughs> just enjoy the weekend on Peacock. So every series, War Games. Me, thank you so much for being here. I've been Steve Fall. She is too sweet. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.